Jesus taught many spiritual lessons in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John by using physical illustrations. Examples, such an example would be a mustard seed, uh, the lost coin of Luke chapter 15, uh, the fig tree, Luke chapter 13, just to name a few. There are many, many lessons Jesus taught by using physical objects or physical things to, to teach something which was spiritual and important messages for those to hear. Well, this morning, I'm going to attempt to do the same thing, uh, taking that example from Jesus. And our lesson this morning is going to be a lesson about shoes. Now, there's going to be something about the shoes that we can take these uh, shoes and we can learn something spiritual about it, some things from the Word of God. So the first shoe that I have here to talk about is this shoe right here. This is a work shoe. This work shoe is uh, a shoe that is always, uh, always dependable. It's something that is you're busy out. When you need to get busy working, you can depend upon that shoe. A work shoe, and Jesus himself teaches us uh, the importance of work. And at the uh, very early age of about 12 years old, Jesus told um, Joseph and Mary, he said, uh, wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. And Jesus says in uh, John chapter 9 and verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me. Jesus came to do the works of God, his father. I must, he says, work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. And so as we desire to be like Jesus, that is, we want to follow his example, we have no better example than Jesus himself and how he was about his father's business. So we should also want to be about our father's business. And there is work to be done. As with the, the work shoe, it's used to, uh, to get a lot of work done. And it's, uh, it's made strong so that it will withhold the work. So we are to be strong and we're to be workers for the Lord. Not only working to help provide for our families and things, but we also need to realize that we are to be workers for the Lord as Jesus gave us that example. In 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 2 and uh, verse 15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So as we are busy studying, we apply the, the things that we learn from his word to our lives, and we look for opportunities to help to do the work of the Lord, to help save souls, present the word of God to others, share it with our friends, neighbors. So that is what we are to be doing. Do whatever we can for the Lord. And it's, we don't all have the same abilities. We don't all have the same shoes. But we can certainly do what we can for the work, uh, for the work, for the sake of the serving the Lord. Well, this uh, this lesson today is not. Um, I'm not trying to say that if you wear a certain shoe that you are uh, that you are the person that that uh, these shoes remind me of. Uh, most of these shoes are shoes that I wear, but there is lessons that we can get from from these shoes. But um, I'm not trying to say that because you are wearing a certain shoe, that's the, the way you are or anything. But I'm, we're trying to get some lessons from these shoes. The next shoe that I have is this shoe right here. This is a house shoe. Now, this house shoe can remind me of responsibilities that we have at home. This is when, we wear, when, we, when I wear the house shoe is in the home, in the house. And so it is that we have responsibilities to, uh, to our homes. Fathers have responsibilities to his, ch his children. Mothers have responsibilities in the home, taking care of the home. Uh, there's responsibilities husbands have to wives, wives to husbands. And there is that responsibility in the home. And that's what this shoe can remind me of. And Titus, um, chapter 2 and verse 4 and 5, it says, 
that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Talking about older women teaching the younger women to love their husbands and, and love their children. And uh, in Titus chapter 2, in the next verse here, it says, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, discreet, I'm oh, sorry, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may be not blasphemed. And in Ephesians chapter 4, 6, I'm sorry, in verse 4, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And then Ephesians 5 and verse 25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So we see that we have responsibilities at home, and that is what this shoe reminds me of. The next shoe I have is this shoe. This is called a boat shoe. Uh, there's, these are my favorite shoes. I have several pairs of these because they're very comfortable, and I like to wear these shoes. So this, these are called boat shoes. They're very comfortable. Um, and I, it reminds me, uh, this shoe kind of remind me of how that many people are very comfortable in their religion that they're practicing. They may have been uh, brought up with grandma and grandpa and uh, uh, parents and different ones or their friends. All They're just very comfortable in their religion. And when you go to talk to them, you have gone to talk to people and a lot of people, they don't want to be bothered with the truth. They don't want you to study with them in the word of God. They're comfortable with what they've got. These are a very comfortable shoe, and many people are very comfortable with their religions, whether they be right or whether they be wrong. The, the problem, one problem is with these, with these uh, boat shoes is that they're slick on the bottom. And uh, on one, one, morning, one Sunday morning, I had a, a blackberry cobbler pie I was going to bring to services to give to Ray. And as I got to the car, it, it was icy or uh, slick there, and that shoe, that shoe slipped, and I, down I went. And, and so these shoes, uh, these shoes are very comfortable, but they are also slick on the bottom. And this is the way it is with many folks. They become very comfortable in the, their religions, whether they are uh, true or whether they are not. But uh, it's like the shoe, it's slick on the bottom. That is, uh, they, they are easily uh, taken in with these things and other things that are uh, appealing to the, to the fleshly lust and, and entertainment and all of that, and they're taken in with that. And they're very comfortable with that. But regardless whether it's comfortable or not, we have to stick with the truth of God's word. In Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 17, it says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know all these things before, Beware lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Now, we don't want to fall from the truth. When we find the truth, we need to hold on to the truth and never let go of it. But let's be careful. We're, just, we're told in the scriptures to watch, to be on guard, that we don't fall. Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, in verse 12, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Yes, we can fall. Now, I found that out when, it's, uh, when, when I'm wearing the, these shoes. They're slick on the bottom. I don't want to wear these shoes now when it's uh, icy outside because I don't want to be falling and getting injured. Well, it is that we need to stick with the truth and we need to watch out because we can fall. We can be led once uh, to the left or the right, following after something that's not true, and we can fall from the faith. Well, going on, because I have... This is a rather lengthy lesson. I can't spend too much time on all of them. I would like to mention that on this, this boat shoe, if you could also look at Mark chapter 13, verses 34 through 37. I think I will read this one, beginning with 34. For the Son of Man is as a man taking his far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the, uh, when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So we are to be on guard, we're to watch. 
that we don't fall, who don't fall for this or don't fall for that. <coughs> the next shoe I have is a dress shoe. Here's a dress shoe. And when I look at the dress shoe, it makes me think of where the emphasis are put, not that, not that you, you know, if you're wearing the dress shoe, this is one I wear too, not that I'm uh, putting the emphasis on myself because of that, but this shoe reminds me, is making me think of what I can compare it to. So what I could compare the, the dress shoe to is someone who would put emphasis on brand names and the outward appearance instead of the inward. Now, God looks upon the heart. He doesn't look upon the outward appearance. He looks upon the heart. And if the inward appearance is what it should be, the outward appearance is going to, to show that also. So uh, in, in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9, which is 9 and 10, it says, In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good work. Good, with good work. So see, it's more important to be uh, thinking of what's on the inside of, of good works. In 1 Peter chapter uh, 3, I'll turn over here to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 3, I'd like to read verses 3 and 4. Whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of plaiting the hair or wearing of gold or putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So it's more important to be concerned about the inward person. Uh, and it says in here that a meek and quiet spirit is in the sight of God of great price. It's more important than the outward show. Well, the next shoe that I have is um, a shoe that I like to wear. It's very comfortable, and it's just the flip-flop. The flip-flops. I've always liked to wear flip-flops ever since I was a little boy. And just going outside to the garden or whatever, and because I was allergic to bees, I, <coughs> I couldn't go barefooted too much, so I'd wear the flip-flops. Flip-flop reminds me of, um, of a person who just kind of flips here and there, um, slides along, uh, doesn't, doesn't uh, stand firm, but just kind of, he flips here, he services here, then he's somewhere else, he's in this, this denomination, that denomination, just flip-flopping around. And, you know, with the, with the flip-flop, mud gets in there. You, if you go out in the garden or something, you're going to get mud in your, your flip-flop. And so it is with many times people uh, of this, this comparison, they let the mud in. That is, they, they let the, uh, the world in. Instead of sti sticking with the truth of God's word, they begin to go along with this or go along with that and these things that's been introduced into religion and all of these different things. And so they're just kind of flip-flop and letting the world in, influence them uh, in their thinking instead of sticking with the word of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, abounding always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13, watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. In, in Ephesians, I'm going to turn to uh, Ephesians chapter 6, just a moment. Ephesians chapter 6, reading verses 10 through 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, and against, but against principalities, against powers, against uh, rulers in the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, the shield of faith, wherein ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, 
praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And here in these verses it, it says, and your feet shod with, with the preparation of the gospel. So we are to, we are to uh, be strong, watch, and continue to serve the Lord and not allow ourselves to kind of flip-flop around here, there, and everywhere else. The next one that I have is an exam example would be this shoe. This is a gym shoe. A gym shoe. Gym shoes, you notice, have uh, traction on them. They're uh, very popular. Lots of people have gym shoes. But when I look at the gym shoes, it makes me think of those individuals who are very sports-minded. You know, uh, there's times when we would leave to come to services and you see all these people coming down our road on their bicycles and their helmets. And, and you find people that are so sports-minded, they got a, a night for this, this sport, a night for that sport, and that's now a night for that sport, and they're so busy with all their sports, they don't have any time for God. And so they kind of left God out of the picture. And even on, the, even on the Lord's Day, here they are out in their sports instead of using the Lord's Day for the Lord. Well, that's what that, would, that comparison with the, this, that the gym shoe uh, makes me think of. In Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6, it says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. So what is more important to us? You know, to many people, sports is the most important thing. It's very important. It's more important than just about anything, and they're so busy with their sports. But when it really, uh, we, God should be first place in our lives. We are to be serving God and following the example that Jesus has set and doing the will of our Father and be on fire for the Lord instead of on fire for this, all these different sports. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to go to have a, play a ball, play ball or something, but when all those sports begin to take the place of God, something is bad wrong. It says, it goes, the next verse says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So it's better to be spiritually minded. Another, another passage you can go to for this is Mark chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. Mark chapter 4, we'll turn over here quickly. Mark 4, verses 18 and 19. And these are they which are um, sown among the thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And no many, for many people, sports has choked the word, and that has become so important to them, and their priorities are in the wrong place. Well, the next the next one I have to show is this one right here. This is called a penny loafer. These were very popular uh, back in the 60s, the mid-60s, uh, late 50s, mid-60s. The reason they're called penny loafers is because they're made to where you can put a penny in here. And you know, the college students, they were very popular with college students. In fact. Uh, they often wore these penny loafers, but they didn't wear the socks with them. Well, the penny loafer, uh, the comparison I would make with this, really, uh, when you even think of the name penny loafer, it makes me think of that, uh, individuals who are lazy or slothful. You know, we're not to be slothful in business. We're not to be lazy. We're to be workers. And the Bible points that out. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 10, it says, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. So uh, God looks upon work as important. And it, he, works, he looks upon it as important for a working for our families, but he also looks upon it as important for working for him, for the Lord. And Jesus set that example, as we noted earlier, at an early age, that he said, I must be about my father's business. He was a worker, Jesus a worker, a tireless worker. And so we can take that example from him. I'm going to turn over to Proverbs chapter 6, reading verses 6 through 11. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise, which have no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. 
How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. Now the next one, the next shoe that I have is this shoe. Back when I was, uh, when I was my late teens and early 20s, I just really liked the hush puppy shoes. And they were so comfortable, and that's what I wore. They were very comfortable shoes. They're more comfortable than, than what I, I really like these shoes, but the, the uh, hush puppies were even more comfortable. They were very comfortable. Well, I, um, I haven't heard anything about them for some time, but a while back I was at a store and I did find these hush puppies. Now, these are really not anything like the ones I used to wear, but this is more of a gym shoe. But the hush puppy is our next one that we want to look at. When I look at the hush puppy, I, in making comparison with this shoe, I think about those individuals who are fearful. Uh, they, are, uh, they won't go ahead and stand up for what's right. They won't go ahead and, and speak the truth of God's word. They find a, an audience that uh, they don't want to step on any toes, so they just uh, preach a little, you know, preacher, teach a little sermonette, make people feel really good, they go out the door, and next time they, time they come in, feel, they feel real good again, another sermon. He doesn't give them what he wants, I mean, what God wants. He doesn't speak the truth. And that's the way it is with many places. There are individuals that will stand up and just preach to please the people. Well... Uh, sometimes people are fearful, a preacher might be fearful of preaching the truth because he's afraid his, his, uh, his um, salary is going to be cut. You know, a lot of these preachers, are, they are, they are uh, paid money, and some they're, they're afraid of that. They're fearful of that, so they won't tell the people the truth. Um, sometimes, you know, we, we need to make sure that we are not that way. We don't want to be like that hush puppy. You know, we don't want to be where... We just kind of hush up, and we don't stand up for the truth, and we just kind of go along, along with them. We laugh at their dirty jokes, or we laugh at, at their whatever, just kind of go along with them. It's go along to, to please them instead of uh, standing up for what's right. In Titus chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. That's what the, we're to speak, that which become a sound doctrine. That is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. That's what's to be preached. That's what we're to live by. That's what we're to help others to know about. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 14 and 15, the Bible reads here that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Jesus Christ is the head, and when we, uh, when we have an opportunity to talk to people about the truth, we speak the truth in love. Love for their souls. Love for, for God and Jesus who died for them. And so it is that we are to speak the truth and not be trying to hide the truth or put our light under a bushel or fearful uh, because of other people what other people are going to say or do, but have the courage to go ahead and stand up for what's right. Well, then we come to this, this here, this rain boot. <coughs> this rain boot, uh, I have rain boots at the back door of our kitchen where they go out to the porch. I have them at the basement door where they go out. I will sometimes take the, this one and put it to the front door to go out. And there's a very good reason because every morning when I go out to work, I'm going to have, if I wear one of these shoes, I'll go out there and, and here I forgot where one of those shoes, I got grass all over it. You got to clean them all up. But the boot there, that rain boot, there I can, I can get that out and take it out and don't worry about it. Sit back there, it's ready the next time I need it right there on the, by the, the door, and the, by the po on the porch by the door. Well, um, the, boot, the, the rain boot is always there ready, 
and waiting. I can depend upon that rain boot. It's there if I will just remember always to take my shoe off and put my rain boot on. And so that's, that's what I think about this. And I, it reminds me of those individuals who are always ready and waiting. You know, you can depend on them. They're always ready to do their part. They're ready to, to uh, work for the Lord. And um, they're just always ready and waiting. So when I, if I need somebody, I think way back when I need somebody to go door to door, um, little Cordy, I could always, I could always uh, depend on her. She'd go with me anytime, door to door, to invite people to services or talk to them about their soul. And there's different ones that I can, in my life, that I can think of that that's, you can always depend on. They're always ready and willing to do whatever they can for the Lord. In Matthew chapter... 24. Go over here. I'm doing pretty good on my time. So, Matthew chapter 24, looking at verse 42, beginning. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known at what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his house, household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is he is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with a drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cast him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Back in verse 46, it said, Blessed is that servant whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find doing, that faithful servant. You know, we are all servants. We are to be servants of the Lord. That means to serve. And that's the thing about this book. It is always ready, always ready. And I can depend upon it. Can God depend upon us? Are we ready? Are we always ready to do whatever we can for the Lord? Can he depend upon us? Are we a good servant? So we ask ourselves, what kind of servant do I want to be? I want to be that good and faithful servant that is always ready. That is always ready to do my, do my part. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and, 8 and 9, it says, Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Yes, there are uh, aff afflictions and things will come. The, there is rain, there is sometimes hail, there is wind and things that come, and this boot continues to do its part in keeping your feet and legs dry. And there are afflictions that come upon us in this life, but we must continue to be a good and faithful servant. God will be with us, and whatever comes along, there are many hardships and things that can come along, but God will be with us, and we can pray to him, make our petitions known, and continue to be faithful day in and day out, just like the boot is always there, day in and day out. It's ready. Ready, watching, and waiting for the Lord's return. Well, the next one I have, this is not one of my shoes, obviously, but this is the high heel. The high heel. Now, <clears throat> the high heel, if I look, take a lesson from this, I can think of the of it makes me think, you know, of this comparison, of a person who may be proud, haughty, 
high-minded, uh, wanting everyone, wanting people to look to them. Um, not that because you wear a high heel, you're that way, but I'm just saying this is a comparison that I can make or get from this because of being high. And there are, there are individuals who think too highly of themselves. You know, we're, not to, we're, we're told in the Bible, we're warned not to think too highly of ourselves. We're to be humble. We're to be, uh, be uh, wise and realize that God is the one who needs the glory. We need to give the glory to God. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 16, be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but to condescend. That word condescend means come on down. But come on down or condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. We're not to be conceited. We're not to be haughty and arrogant, think that we're better than everybody else, and treat people looking down upon them. That's what the Pharisees did. That's the way they did, treated Jesus. They thought they were so great, and they looked down upon Jesus. They were haughty and uh, always trying to cause trouble and stuff. But we're not to be that way as children of God. In 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 6, it says, and this is uh, instructions about uh, elders, putting individuals in as elders. It says, not a novice. That word novice means a new convert. Not a novice lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. You know, if you try to put somebody who's a novice or new convert in a position such as an eldership, uh, that's, a, a, that's something that they think, oh, wow, then that, they, they may be lifted up in pride. And, of course, they wouldn't meet the qualifications that are listed in, in uh, Titus and Timothy either. This is also something uh, that we need to always be, on, be, be wise about because I know through the school system, sometimes if somebody is put in a position that they are, they are not um, very uh, knowledgeable about, they haven't been even in the school system very long at all, and they put them above other people that the people they've taught many years, they know what they're doing. And so then you put somebody up like that, they become proud thinking they know everything. They're fresh out of college and they think they know everything. And then it uh, that's, causes problems. Well, it, it causes problems when people think that they are so much better than everybody else and they know everything. And so we're not to be like that. There's the biggest room, room is the room, uh, the biggest room of improvement is the, is the room of, uh, of, uh, of, of learning more and more. We never get to the point where we know everything. In Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18, pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride, haughtiness, arrogancy, that would not be pleasing to God. In 1 John 2 and verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Pride is one of them, and pride of life. We're not to be proud, haughty, arrogant, looking down upon other people. They want everybody to look at us and lift us up. Now, we're, we're just servants. We're serving the Lord. And we don't have any right to be trying to take the glory and all uh, the, to us that actually should be going to God and to Jesus. Well, the next shoe I have is this little shoe, the baby shoe, the baby shoe. Well, the baby shoe makes me think of new, new Christians, new Christians. Now, I couldn't find, I looked for one of the old, our old baby shoes in the basement, couldn't find it, but I found a Cabbage Patch doll's shoe, and that's almost like it, so that's what I've got here. But this represents the baby shoe. The uh, baby shoes reminds me of little innocent uh, newborn children of God. You know, when you're baptized into the family of God, it says, Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. They rise to live a new life. All those sins are washed away. And that new child of God needs a lot of encouragement, a lot of uh, help and teaching, instruction, and uh, examples for them, 
and caring because they've got a lot of growing, just as a new little baby would need a lot of care, instruction, and help in growing. So it is that newborn Christians, children of God, uh, they also need a lot of encouragement and help. In 1 Peter chapter 2, in verse 2, it says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. And so newborn babes, they need the, the, the sincere milk of the word. They need the, the milk of the word of God. that They can start understanding and growing. Because they don't, when a person obeys the gospel, no matter whether they're 90 or whether they're 20 or whatever, they're, they're newborn babe. And there's a lot of learning to be done. We can't expect a newborn babe to know everything. Because there's so much that, uh, that needs to be learned. And, and, and so much growing that needs to take place. In, uh, in uh, first or second Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, it's, it says, Grow, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. So there's a lot of growing, and God wants us to grow. He doesn't expect us just to stay the same. He expects us to continue to grow and learn, apply those things to our life. As we grow in knowledge, we, that's wonderful. But as we apply that knowledge to our lives, then we grow, grow in God's grace or his favor. And so that's a lot of growth that is to be taking place. Well, I'm going to turn to, um, I've got one more shoe. There's one more, and then the lesson's going to be about over. Now, this last one, I don't have it with me. It's one that my dad and I both had them alike. And they were uh, steel-toed boots. Now, the steel-toed boot that I had had the steel under there, under the leather of the toe part. And so if you dropped a log on your foot, that steel there protected your toes and did not get hurt. The steel-toed boot was um, something that I wore a lot in doing the work and, um, and even uh, wore out the sole or, or the, the bottom of the heel. And I know down in Pine Knot, Kentucky, I had the uh, new soles put on it because uh, those were such good uh, boots because they protected the foot. So the, the steel-toed boot, and as I said, it's long gone. I don't have one to show you. But uh, the steel-toed shoe reminds me of a comparison I can make with that is something that's strong. The person who is very strong, uh, very, uh, now you think about very strong, I'm talking about spiritually strong, who has withstood the test of time, who has continued to be faithful to the Lord day in, day out, year in, year out, as all these years pass, we see this individual who has continued to be strong and faithful, setting the example for others, uh, working for the Lord, putting his, true, his trust in the Lord. Uh, so one who is very thankful to God and thankful to Jesus, thankful for the word of God. Someone who has been tried and true, all the troubles and struggles and all the trials that that individual has gone through, he is still, or she is still continued to be faithful to the Lord and is one that is grounded in the truth. And Ephesians chapter 3, I'll turn over here. Ephesians chapter 3, reading verses 14 through 21. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, <clears throat> that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might 
by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye, may, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23, If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Yes, this steel-toed boot makes me think of someone who, is <clears throat> who has withstood all the problems and trials in this life and has continued to be faithful to the Lord. Someone to look up to, someone to help in time of need. And, you know, the elders and deacons are examples uh, of First Timothy 3 and Titus chapter 1. Uh, speaking of the elders and deacons, those are examples. The older women teaching the younger women, there's another example. There's examples of those in the scriptures who have withstood, the Apostle Paul is another, who have withstood all the problems and troubles in this life, but they have continued to be faithful and strong. They have continued to, to be there and protect and, and teach and do whatever they can. And that's what the steel-toed boot reminds me of. Well, this has been a lesson about shoes. In conclusion, Jesus is our example as how we should walk. You know, our shoes are made for walking. I think there's a old song like that, but there's uh, something like that. But anyway, our shoes, we use those shoes uh, to walk in, and Jesus is our example showing us how we're to walk. <laughs> we're, walk we're to walk according to the gospel of Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and 21, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Jesus is the best example that we have. We are to follow his steps. He has laid out the course. We're to follow the instructions <coughs> and follow as he has set down for us. In 3 John chapter 3 and verse, uh, 3 John verses 3 and 4. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. We are to walk in truth. Stay with the truth. Stick with the truth. Don't, don't allow anybody to take it from you. Be faithful unto death. In heaven will you be your home. Well, Jesus says, come unto me. You know, Jesus came once. To this earth. He came and he withstood all the trials and problems, mocking and spitting and everything, that, even to the death on the cross. Jesus withstood it all, being faithful. And so we are to be faithful. We are to follow our beloved Savior's example, and we are to be faithful. Well, if we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, then we will believe what Jesus and his apostles teach us in the New Testament. And in the Bible it says, faith without works is dead. You know, faith is important. We must believe that he is or we will die in our sins. But faith alone does not save. That's a dead faith. Even the devils believe and tremble. But we are to have a strong faith 
in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Strong enough that we will do what Jesus says to do. Strong enough that we will do what his beloved apostles teach us in the scriptures that we're to do. And the Bible teaches us that except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Now it's repent or perish. And every individual has to choose for himself, herself, Am I going to repent of my sins, turn away from doing that, which is sinful? Sin is a transgression of God's law. When we're doing that which transgresses God's law, we're sinning. Am I going to give, repent of that? Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. A person must repent of his sins. Upon repenting of one's sins, then we can see that Jesus says, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father, which is in heaven. And we see there that just before going down into the water, there in Acts chapter 8, the Ethiopian eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's the Bible confession that we read of. And then they went down to water, both Philip and the eunuch. He baptized him. And they come up out of the water, and he went on his way rejoicing. You can go on your way rejoicing this morning if you've never done that. If you would submit to God's will, you would put your faith in Jesus Christ, repent of your sins, make the good confession that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and be buried in baptism to rise to live a new, live a new life. And if there's someone here that needs the prayers of the church, we'd be glad to assist you in, in that as well. We're going to stand now, stand now and sing the song of encouragement. Let us sing.